Welcome to Hit Points Gaming. In today's episode, we will be giving our overall coverage of PAX East 2020. And this is our eighth time yes. going to PAX East. We've been to every single one except for the very first one. And I'd like to say that uh, it was lacking a little bit this year. I'm going to start off by saying that due to the coronavirus. Well, everything is due to. Yeah. <laughs> people... People had pulled out. The AAA titles pulled out days before the event. Yes. I was nervous. Uh, I was nervous about a lot more people oh, being pulled okay, out. Okay. Yes. Not by going. Okay. I, I didn't mind. Um, so I, I think what we're going to do for this episode, I, we put out a lot of other episodes highlighting some either video games or board games that we either got to demo and you can check those out this is going to be more of like our overall experience we're going to go basically i think what we said from like the front of the entrance hall all the way to the back i'll um, kind of hit some of those key points this is going to cover more of the smaller yes the games that we weren't able to film or the games that we couldn't get footage of i like i like how okay. you said that because okay. there's some really big games in here but we weren't allowed to film right and this is the first year that you actually received a press pass for it, right <clears throat> right which you were able to get onto the show floor ahead of time and get to experience some of those things, which is why I was disappointed that there weren't more AAA titles for you to get your hands on because those are those could be lines of three, four hours long. And I was excited and then disappointed. So, right. so let's just, I want to just talk about this PAX. PAX has grown hugely. This is the ninth PAX. 2020 will be the 10th. This is the 10th year, I guess, then, right? It was, yes. So we've been the nine shows. Yes. Okay, we missed the first one, yeah. Um, it's grown exponentially. It's become unbearable. The one thing that was really good about this year is everyone did pull out. You know? Who who pulled out? Sony pulled out. Sony? Um, Cyberpunk? Cyberpunk, you know. Uh, uh, and another, another one yeah, other Project that I can Red. remember. Yeah, Project Red is uh, Cyberpunk. Cyberpunk. Uh, but not having those two allowed them to expand the show floor a little bit. Yeah, it didn't feel as crowded. It did not. And I'm hoping some people stayed home too because there was points on Friday and Saturday it wasn't like bumpy. It yeah. wasn't, yeah. We weren't bumping into each other. Yeah, we get there Wednesday night actually. It's the best. So that It's Thursday. actually the worst. Thursday is the worst day to go to PAX. Don't go on Thursday. Don't you go it's Thursday. so crowded. It is so bad. It's not worth your time. It's the best day to go. <clears throat> um, I thought they did a really good thing. I want to touch it real quick. The coronavirus. They had people standing on the escalator spraying the hands. They had uh, cleaning materials everywhere, sanitizing wipes, anti-vac everywhere. Yeah. No matter what you say about it not working, it was there for you to try and make it work. Absolutely. Definitely. definitely Very cool. Great. So let's start it. Okay. Um, Nintendo. The Nintendo booth, probably, well, I think it's probably the best booth I've ever seen. I'm going to start by oh saying that. Oh my gosh. So, think of any other booth that has been out. They always do spend a lot of money. They do great. What other booth? Have we ever seen as good as that? Uh, they did have the overhead projectors projecting the water down, moving for this mm -hmm. Animal Crossing promotion they were doing. Yeah. Do you have any shots of that? Yes. Are you pulling that up right yes. now? Yes. Okay. Good. 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 Yeah. You could you could stand in line to take your shot inside Animal Crossing, which was pretty rad. I thought it was extremely great. Okay. Did you stand in line to do it? Well, no. Okay. Okay. Uh, because I think Nintendo's showing was lackluster. I'm not going to stand in line to play Animal Crossing and what, shake a tree? 30% of their booth was taking pictures. Yes. It visually was the greatest thing. Okay. That was it. I didn't stand in line. I okay. took a picture from back here. I didn't have to be in there holding the fishing net. I took a picture of somebody doing it. I was like, ah, look how great this is. And that, that was it. 30% of the booth was taking the pictures, which was cool. 30, the other 30% of it was selling overpriced Nintendo merchandise. Yes. Which people were in line for crazy. They're selling out. Selling out. The other 30% was actually demoing Animal Crossing. I was going to demo a game. No, whatever. Yeah. And then the other, the small 10% was the get your Isabella pin, which I got. That's probably the best so, thing. And there was a long line for that. Raptor and his yeah. getting them. Because their pins are really always really nice. Mm -hmm. Enamel pins. They spent a lot of money on that. Yeah. And, and it shows. Their booth, like you say, I have to kind of agree, it was one of the better ones, if not the best one. The way with the pictures, the red projectors, projecting the water, the sound. Sure. It did a great job. Opposite of them. Opposite of them. The show we're going to start off right away by my favorite part of the show, 
my favorite game, and we're gonna get into it. Oh, we are. We're gonna get into it. Is Final Fantasy VII the remake? Okay, so uh, we're both fans of Final Fantasy VII. Yes, don't huge don't, fans. Yes. Okay, so uh, I was very glad that they still were going to be there. Mm -hmm. I was afraid. I think they. I think uh, Square Enix actually dialed back a little bit. They didn't fully come to the show. I think there's okay. a few things they stopped, but at least it was still there. Uh, and I will say, you know, we waited in line, but they did a great thing oh, with this man. line. Yes. Got in line real <laughs> early, and they were giving you tickets that basically told you when to come back to stay in line because it was a 20-minute demo, and they mm -hmm. were able to do, like, three groups of... three groups of about 40 people each to, to play the game. No, they didn't have there was, some there, people in there. There was 40 terminals. Okay, you're not 40 each. Well, for each, for each hour... Okay, okay. Block, you know <laughs> okay. what I mean? Like, you show up between one yeah, and two, yeah. and, you know, 120 people got to play at okay. that point, you know? So I only had to wait an hour, really, mm -hmm. to come in, so that, that was really good. Um, so basically, uh, we couldn't take any photos. Yeah, I get there nice and early for press hour, ready to play, get some nice footage, can't get footage. Yeah. Please put your camera away. Which is kind of weird, because they didn't want any footage to going out that was, like, wonky and janky to make it look like the game was bad. All right, whatever. There's so much video out there already, even prior to us going there. Hey, whatever. We, we weren't able to take anything. But the thing with that, though, I think they should have had this television screens inside. Don't show it to people. If you don't want pictures, and there was even people saying yeah. no pictures, blocking the pictures, yeah. don't allow Just me the ability around. of taking pictures. Right, right. right. And that, put, that was really... cloth up or something. <clears throat> and I think the reason they weren't allowing taking pictures, I'm going to get right into this. Okay, what is it? It didn't play well. Okay. It was on PS4 Pros. Okay. I saw frame loss, and I am the last person of our friend group to actually see frame loss. Um, things jumping when the boss comes out, because the demo yeah. is the demo is you fighting a few small minions, few minions, and then you fight that first like crab boss mm -hmm. of, of Final Fantasy. When that that boss appears on screen, it was glitching a little bit to get to get him appearing. It possibly was my one PlayStation out of all 40 of them. Sure. Maybe it was the whole demo and the reason they didn't want anyone to film. I wish I had this on film because I would have been trashing this game. The fact that they're going to make three iterations of this at $60 a pop. Go ahead. Tell them, blow your fanboy all over this no, game. No, 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 no. <laughs> I will say, maybe you're right. I didn't notice any frame loss. I... Uh, yeah. uh, I don't notice. I don't really care that much about the frame. But for you to say to say that, something must have been up. You must have saw something because you were texting us. You were able to play it ahead of us, and you were like, "Oh, this is bad." We thought you were joking, no. and then we played it, and we still thought you were joking until we met up again, and we're like, "Oh, what's going on?" So I'm not sure. Right. Uh, let's stick with the current demo that we played. Yes. Um, I'm glad. I think it was a, a good length. It was a great demo. Great demo. Yes, the demo was really clear. You got to play as Cloud. You could switch to Barrett. And you got to do a boss fight. Uh, the game, the game itself, the, the style. Because I, mean, I know right now there's going to be a lot of talks about the different Final Fantasy demos right now. Uh, but I really liked how you were able. The battle system, I think they nailed. Okay. I think you because the way that you could switch between characters, the Quick. way I can give commands yes. for you to do something, it, it. Felt like I was playing Final Fantasy VII, which is what I wanted, but I felt like I was playing a different game. Which it's is like Kingdom Hearts. Yeah, keep going. Because I wanted, I wanted to like, it's not the same exact thing, right? But it's exactly what I'm looking for. Okay. As yeah. a as a fan, you're saying. As a fan. Okay. As a fan. Uh, now since this, I, we came back home from Pax East, and the very next day, well, the main demo comes out. And, and it's, it's different, it's, right? It's different. Different okay. demo. It's it's longer. Um. I only played it for a little bit because I know I'm going to get the game in less than a, uh, actually a month from now. Uh, and they expanded on that. One of your critiques about the game, we'll bring it up, is you just keep hitting square. Yeah. Square, 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 square. And then, yeah, you can you can do the magic and whatnot. And that's fine. The the new demo itself, there's different stances. You know, square, 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 hold square for a different attack. Okay. Um, counter stances, so if I defend at the right time, I can do a counter attack. So you're involved a lot more. So I totally get it. When you play, you're like, there really wasn't much to do. And I defended as, well, when you did an RPG, your basic attack is just hitting X anyway. Didn't bother me. But now playing the demo, they added, more recent yeah, demo, more recently. they added so much more in. But is it too much? I don't want to get too much into, into it, you know, but is it too much for an RPG? 
No. It's, now I'm playing Hack and Slash. Well, it's a different <clears throat> game, which I feel is a $60 value. Okay. Because the game itself, just you're in Midgar, is a full-length Final Fantasy game or something. Okay. So okay. let's see what that's like. I just, the nostalgia, it's exactly what I wanted. I'm I put the headphones play. on, the music was Instantly. like, I'm like, back home, live my best. Like, yes. And then at that point, I was basically done with PAX East. I saw the Nintendo booth, I got to play Final Fantasy, I was ready to go back to the room and just play board games. Okay. They had a nice booth. Uh, the demos were set up. I don't know why they were set up outside for the video. They had some nice pictures. Mm -hmm. They had some memorabilia, some stuff for you to buy. They handed out some cool posters. I'm mad I only grabbed one because they were really nice. Um, the, the one I got home is in great condition, so that's awesome. Um, they were doing promotion with Snickers, I think, or no, Butterfingers. I know. I got, so, the, I got that Tifa theme already uh, on my PS4. Okay. Instantly, I got that. <laughs> okay. It's up there right now. Um, but very cool booth. Happy cool. it was there. We got to play that. Uh, next up, I just want to really hit real quick. Fuser, another very, big, very big, big booth. booth. Fire, smoke. spark, smoke. <clears throat> it was like, oh, DJ. I was like, I'm a big DJ hero fan. I really like the game. I was pretty good at it too, okay. which I like. I saw this, I'm like, yeah. Wait, you're just playing with a controller. You're playing drop mix with a controller. I'm playing drop mix with a controller. Take a record, place it. Ah, take another record, place it. Now there's just music playing. Yeah. And there's a huge booth and everyone's so excited. Yeah, yeah they've got a DJ. Yeah. We moved on. Yeah, that, very that cool it. booth. I just wanted to say that it was colorful, bright, but I, I hope the, the booth was the best thing there. Yes. Um, uh, I guess, what would be next? Um, well, I will say, I get, we touched on this. Yeah, because of the AAA, there was no other AAA titles there. That it was a huge... That was it. It was really it was really Final Fantasy. Yeah. Uh, you know, I really wanted to see uh, The Last of Us 2. I was super excited to play that game. Not there. I wanted to see any coverage about... Um, no one Cyberpunk. knows what Cyberpunk is. That's the thing. It. Nobody it knows keeps changing. Every time they play put out any footage it's like different yeah i wanted to actually just try it and, and see uh, whatever um i got to play doom annihilation at the discord booth you're a big doom fan i love doom this was a really good game this is another game we could not film i could take pictures wow. but why take pictures of not certain things i couldn't take pictures of certain things so hmm. i decided not to take any pictures very fun game very fast fluid just like the last doom the newer doom game um real like it's just shooting Hitting, moving, shooting, hitting, you know, you have to get enough uh, gasoline for your chainsaw to make sure oh, you're okay. getting health and ammo. Because a lot of it's, I'm running out of shotgun ammo, so I have to do uh, a certain move to kill you so I can to get, get more it. ammo. Okay. I'm low on health, chainsaw. It's a lot of that kind of stuff. Okay. Very fun. Um, I like, they added, um, just, it just seems like they made new maps. Same enemies, at least okay. in this demo. Okay. Um, very cool, fun. I got a cool Discord glow in the dark pin. Ooh. Um, I played the demo for so long they had to kick me out. I didn't know I was there that long. This guy. There was it was a demo that wasn't a demo. You know, it just it was probably the whole game. I could have just stood there all day. Mm. Very fun game. I'm really looking forward to Doom Annihilation, especially after playing it. Okay. Got, can it be co-op? I don't even know. Do I haven't played Doom in a while? I played Doom Four. They have like a competitive thing. Um, at least the last one, you know, you're trying to get points. Okay. You know, and there's still hidden stuff. I found a couple of hidden things in the game. Okay. Great, great shooter game. If you're looking for like a fast pace, got it. That's what it is, and just crank that difficulty up after you beat it. Yeah. It becomes a new game too, because now it's instead of just me, you, you. Now I have to move really? and yeah, okay, really cool. Um, one of the booths that looked, you know, it, it wasn't a cool booth, but it was pretty big, was uh, the Magic the Gathering Magic game. Legends. Magic yeah. Le Legends. We wanted to try this out, and we weren't able to. Right. Um, it was pretty packed, because again, the it's AAA packed. didn't, like, pull pull a lot of the yeah. big pennies, so they would go to, like, these medium-sized uh, games, I would say. Uh, it and it's magic, fun. it's magic. But Magic's always big. People are here, yeah. Magic is still kicking it. Still, still going. But, yeah, the trading card game is amazing. Yeah. How many people play? But anyway, yeah. Uh, it looks good. I would like to have tried it. You yeah. know, um, it it's a Diablo style, but I can cast certain spells. But the thing that really intrigued me was like, I in order to cast spells, I had to have certain types of mana to actually cast it. That's what I wanted to see how that worked. Like, did I have to pick up or find? That well, you mana? had cards. The game uses cards that you find and that allows you to do the abilities. Oh. And I asked if this these cards tied into the MT, the Magic the Gathering game on, online, yeah. and he said no. 
Okay. I thought it would have been really cool if you could bring your deck over. Whoa. And now you have this very powerful character to play online yeah, with, you know? The nice tie-in, make, maybe making me play Magic the Card Game if, from just playing this, you know? Okay. Smart. But okay. it looked really good. I uh, wish we would have been able to play it. Yeah, yeah. Uh, I'm trying to think next up, next up. Oh, um, probably Indie. Anything else in the beginning? Indie. Uh, in the beginning, you know, they had the, they had the new uh, Darksiders. Looks pretty cool. Okay, moved on from there. You know, it, it's going to be free in six months anyway. That's the thing with Darksiders. I, I own them all because they all became okay. free. They give it to you. The Desperados game was also in there with SpongeBob. Desperados look pretty interesting. It's okay. kind of like a XCOM Western yeah. ish that looked sharp. There's a lot of that coming now, so I don't really know. There's a lot of yeah. XCOM looking Yeah, games. yeah. And they usually take a lot of time, so I can't sink my teeth into something. I'll, right. I'll just I'll just wait for the next XCOM. Yeah, because I know that that's pretty polished. Uh. Yeah, I guess indie. Uh, before I give my thoughts on indie, I would like to know yours. Um, I liked it. I always like indie. I always I felt like we were playing a lot more indie games this year as well. I think the exact opposite. Whoa, okay. Why? So indie is one of why you know once we spend day and two days at PAX, then we can spend the rest of the time through indie, indie yeah. to go. Through. I really feel like we played that many indie games. Okay. So. I'm glad you think otherwise, so maybe it was just me. Uh, there's a few that stood out, but not like the past years. There's okay. a, lot of, a lot of other ones that I can really remember. This, I remember I did a, a Unrail, Unrailed game. Well, you guys were... You love this game. Yeah, because this is one of the indie games I played. Okay. I loved it. Okay. it it's, uh, it's um, what's a Uncooked or Overcooked? Overcooked. It's basically Overcooked, uh, and you're trying to... Yeah, there, there's a train, right, that's on a track, uh, but it's only a certain number of, uh, I guess, spaces in front of the train. And you're trying to build the railroad track so the train can continue going to get to the end. Okay. Right? But it's four players, and, you know, you need to cut down the trees to get enough timber to build the, the wooden rails. Then you have to get iron from the rocks and do all this, and everyone's running around, and there's only one pickaxe and one shovel, and blah, 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 blah. It was cool. For those five minutes, I played with two other guys. I, I, they were competent. We, we got to the end, okay. eventually. Um, but I think like that's level one. Just like I had a lot of fun with Overcooked. You got six levels into Overcooked, freaking wanted to destroy the game. It gets like stupid hard. Okay, okay, okay. So I don't know if this is the same thing. Right. You know, it was fun for that moment. I would definitely check it out again. Um, that's really it. Okay. Uh, Kev and I played a VR dueling game. Mm. I can't remember off the top of my head, but the pictures I'll put up will have the name of it. Okay. Very fun game. We used the Oculus. Um, oh my goodness. Oculus, the Oculus Go. Quest. Quest. Okay. <clears throat> very light system. Oculus Quest. We wanted to play it just to play with the Oculus Quest. Yeah. Um, very cool system. You don't need a computer. They right. had it hooked up to computers for the demo. And the game itself is a lot of fun. Um, you're just pretty much too knights dueling mm -hmm. in an arena and you could pull the, the mechanics were really neat you pull you i pull myself into you and i can attack you okay and you can only defend okay for like a certain, I have amount, a certain of amount of time okay a certain amount of energy to, to expel during that time i can come back and charge that energy back up i if i charge my energy as opposed to letting it fill over time i can do double damage during that charge mm. but i also take double damage so now Got you it. can come at me while i'm recharging okay and do double damage on me um, you could throw things so that you're at range, but that uses that same energy. Okay. It was very good. I felt it was a very balanced game. The guy, one of the guys, the developers on it said that he worked on this on strategy games beforehand. So he wanted to make a strategy game, but his friend didn't want to make a strategy game. So they kind of came, came together this. with this. And, and I liked it. The one thing that I heard that was interesting about it was, uh, you know, I think, I think in VR games, it's really tough, especially when doing like a sword battle one. I could just swing like this, you know. I go crazy, crazy, go right? crazy, and you know you really can't get that resistance of when you hit something for you to stop. Right. So what they did in this game is, I think as soon as you made contact with the other player's sword, it would break. Your weapon would break, break, right? So then you had to go back and reach and pull out another weapon, right? Which is pretty sharp. So you can't go super crazy. You're trying to get that one time hit in to actually land a, yes. a, a killing blow. Great mechanic. Really sharp. I thought that was pretty Fun nice. game. I would definitely recommend playing this. It's one of those games they said you can play online with others, okay. but it's definitely a party game. I okay. Felt, um, 
a lot a lot of the VR games like that, you know, you're how often are you gonna play it? Yeah. But if you had another friend to play, I feel we would play this for a while and get ma- and master it. Wow. Yeah. Because okay. it was a lot of fun. I enjoyed so it. Is it is it only so you, sorry, you said multiplayer, but like is it you only just one on one dueling? One on one. One on one. Okay. That's the only way it's set up right now. Yes. Okay. And no talks of expanding from there. Okay. Got it. Um, another game we saw in indie game was I played Skull S K U L. Okay. Very similar. This was one of my favorite games. I really like it. It was a like a slasher, side scroll slasher, very similar to Kid Chameleon. Okay. Um, whereas you find different heads or skulls, put them on, and you transform into these characters. So like Kirby. Sure. Okay. Yes. Yeah. It's very similar. Yes. Yeah. Um. You know, and you can kind of save the last skull you did. So you can kind of go between the two in case you got a flying one and you want a ground-based one or a big guy or a small guy. Okay. And each one had their own abilities, health, armor, stuff like that. Very cool. A lot of fun. I played that demo. Got a couple pictures there. No video of it. I should have, but okay. um, definitely check that game out if you're into that kind of game. Okay. The art was cool. The sound was great. I'm going to be picking this game up. Wow. Yeah, yeah you like those cheap. types of style. Of I, yeah, games. I really like I really like that. Cool. Uh, one of the board games that we were able to play uh, was uh, Set a Watch. Awesome. Right? By Rock Manor Games. Yes. Uh, these are the same company. We actually did a, a, we actually did two videos on this on mm-hmm. our channel. I kind of gave my overview of it, and I think you did a full playthrough of it, of their Lawyer Up game, which is going to be coming to Kickstarter soon. Right. This is their, their previous game. Um, co-op, four players. Uh, basically, um, each of us is a, a different character. I think there was nine characters in yeah, the base game. I, in the, yeah, somewhere around there. The base or the, ex- the expansion, yeah. And basically, we're around a campfire after we did like an actual dungeon crawl or whatever, and now we need to rest. But there's hordes of monsters that come every round trying to, you know, kill us, right? So one of us, one of the four people, have to rest in between turns, and then the other three have to fight together to defeat this like chain of cards that came out and depending on the strength of the flame of your fire you're able to reveal basically that number of cards like the waves of monsters and then we had uh we get to roll dice and then you can do you could you basically set the dice as either for damage or you can trigger certain powers that every player had and uh you're basically just trying to get through all these different rounds i thought it was really cool we, we demoed three rounds i yes. think and, you know, we did pretty well in the first three rounds, but then to find out that it's like eight or nine, that's going to be really, hard. really tough to get through. And then there's there's cards that you take and put towards the last wave. Yeah. So the last wave gets even more challenging. Yeah. It was a really good game. I really should have picked this up for a Friday Night Lights. Mm. This is, a, I thought I felt the rules were very light in it. There's no health. It's just cards. And when you yeah. use your card, you expel your cards, you flip them over and at your health. When you have no cards, you're, you know, you have to kind of heal yeah very cool game i like the art i love the fact that it was a box yep you open it up you play on the box and then you close it up and you bring it home cool it was a game in a box yeah no no it, i it totally like, understand it was it was all right here you it's don't like have to those, have those big small box. like miniature game boxes the tiny yes. epic games and like you use the box to, to set it up like that was actually your watch and everything yeah very simple I, like well, I love that game. I should have picked it up. You know, speaking speaking to those two guys, they're developing a much grander like sci-fi game. That's their next big game that's coming out. Okay. So I'd be interested because I do like I like the rules. I think they spent a lot of time, you know, thinking things out. Every every component makes sense. There's nothing like frivolous in there that was just like oh, I would just throw in there just to have fun. Like everything made sense. So I'm interested to see what they do on on, on a, a larger scale to a type okay. of game. Yeah, because so, that lawyer up game is a very small game. Yeah. Which is a really good game. I can't. I cannot wait for that. We talked about the other the other expansions that are coming out with it. I'm, the, I'm definitely picking that up. That was a good booth for us to visit. Yes. I, I really like Set of Watch. I should have picked that up. Yeah. Um, another board game we played. We played outside of it. We played at our room. Oh, okay. Yeah. This bring, war of mine. They bring two games for us to play at night. Um, this war of mine. Uh, it's been out for a few years now. Okay. Um. I kind of stayed away from it because I heard that the rules were really bad uh, and people gave it uh, bad reviews. I finally eventually went back to it. Um, I didn't think the rules were that bad. Um, you know, I, I taught you guys how to play. Yes, easily. Yeah, I think teaching was pretty simple. It's just, you know, in this one occurrence, this is what you have to do. You have to look through a book and, and read things. But once you know how to play, it's very simple. It was kind of like, it reminded me of um, 
uh, Robinson Crusoe. Okay. So I remember yeah, the first time yeah, I yeah. played it, like, I lost, and I was like, oh, well, I still have fun. But it's weird, the fun of that game. So I could talk about it. Um, it it's it's uh, it's very story-driven, right? But it's very depressing, right? Because you, yeah. you start here, right? And you need to survive a war over X number of rounds. So in this war of mine, you are starting off at the beginning of a war if you haven't played the video game before, and you need to survive, like, I think it's like eight to nine rounds of this war. And you, you start off with three characters, and you have up to four, and, you know, every day you're trying to, you know, have enough food. You go out at night, you scavenge to get goods, bring it back, and try and survive the next day. But you're always, like... You're never going up. You're never going up. You, the up is at the very beginning, you know. Um, so I wanted to, like, get your thoughts. I brought it because it was a co-op game, something I recently got. I know Brayden really enjoyed it, and I wanted to show you guys because we need something to do at night. We, we only went out to one party, which we'll talk about shortly. But what were your thoughts of it? I did enjoy the beginning. Mm -hmm. <clears throat> I just didn't get into it. Um, you, well, you were explaining it to us, you were saying it's very thematic. Mm -hmm. The story is why you're playing this game. Yeah. And you're, you're, you're actually playing this to build your story. And a lot of the things are, you know, you meet somebody, do you help them? Yeah. Do you let them, do you not help them? Do you kill them? Do you let them do this, that? Very cool. Not my cup of tea. Mm -hmm. I did not enjoy this game. It's depressing, the story. That didn't bother me. It's just depressing because I'm never... I never feel like I'm getting anything. Yeah. It's like, oh, we got enough materials. We can build uh, an oven. An oven? I, I got an oven. You know, like, big deal. Okay. And then someone comes and robs you and takes half of that oven. stuff. So now you can't build, you know? Yeah. Um, I thought it was cool. I, I liked playing it because you guys enjoyed playing it. I would prefer never play this game again. Yeah. Um, although I did like the, I liked the board, how it makes sense to go out. You find things, finding things is fun. I it's think that's thrilling. fun when you scavenge at night, the way the, the mechanics cards, work. cards, their time. Do I go longer, get less time, but maybe different things. Um, like Brandon went out by himself as a soldier and got mm -hmm. a lot of stuff. You know, like that is fun. But while he's doing that, I'm sitting here doing nothing. Yeah. He could be out there for a long time. Well, as I'm waiting for my turn as the guard. I have to fight three people. Well, I can't fight them. Come on and steal our stuff. Right. And now I have to deal with you coming home. Hey, they stole our stuff. You know? Yeah, I will say I think this game is, is best played with one or two players. Okay. You know, because we're, we're you're, you're trying to make decisions on what's the best thing to do. We can control one or two different characters. Just because we were all there, there was five of us. Each one of us, like, either had a character or you rolled the dice for that one character. But you're right. If you're the guard... That's best at defending. You're never gonna go out, yeah. and going out's the best part of the game, you know. So uh, it was a it was a, a new co-op game to to, to try. Um, so we did that in the beginning. It, it it was pretty. It's pretty long. We did it for like two nights, I think. Yes. Right. Um, the other game that I brought was uh, Cthulhu: Deathwing Die. Um, what were your thoughts on? That? Well, I guess if you're not familiar with it, it's in the Cthulhu universe. It's by Cool Mini or not. Uh, it's a co-op game, and uh, basically it's scenario-driven, um, which is pretty cool because there's different scenarios, but then you also pick a boss, and you kind of mash them together. This boss comes with its own set of rules, the way that you, you know, his minions that come out, and then a certain scenario of how it's laid out and the objective that you have to do. Basically, you have to fulfill an objective or stop the ritual from occurring, so when the boss comes, you can actually do damage him and defeat him. Uh, a bunch of different characters, all with their own special abilities, uh, and really, as you become more insane, you unlock more powers, and you feel like you're getting stronger. What did you think? I thought it was good. Um, the turns became, once we understood the rules, which were a little sticky at first, mm -hmm. um, it was quick. Your turn was rather quick. You could do stuff. You did stuff. I did stuff. It went around. The turns were rather quick. Yeah. I don't mind long turns, okay. um, you know, because it allows me to plan stuff, but there wasn't much planning. It was like, hey, are you going to go do this boss over here? All right. And then I'm going to come over here. Does that work? Okay, good. Maybe maybe that'll be there on my turn. Right. You couldn't plan too far ahead. It was what I liked. We liked, uh, our gaming group really likes to min-max. Yeah. I think. I mean, that's And a we lot are, of yeah. things, you know, we're gamers for a really long time. This, to me, feels like more of just, let's just jump in and have fun. Yeah. Yes. 
uh, my plan is I'm going to go try and kill that boss. But that could change, you know, because it's, you know, I take a turn and then the monsters go. Well, by the monsters going, they may spawn, they may move, they may do all the different things, which is going to change the person or two people away from me. Yes. Right? So it's just like, let's just go in, let's kind of have a strategy, but let's just go and have fun and throw some dice yeah. and see what happens. And the, the cards were cool. You know, and all the cards that you pick up, the investigations, whatever, mm -hmm. were neat. They were they fit the theme. the theme. They gave you extra abilities. You felt powerful. Yeah. However, I do felt the game was very easy. Okay. Do you disagree? When we played a game, at, when we played the games, we knew the rules. We did have a game that we forgot the rules on, mm -hmm. but we didn't lose anything. You know, it's weird. It's weird. And nothing's wrong with that. winning, but I felt that it was just maybe it's too weird easy. because usually a lot of the games that I bring. Everyone's like, man, this is too hard. This is too hard. This is too hard. Why do you play hard well, games? Was, Why do you play hard games? This is the first time I've ever heard anybody say, this game's too easy. Because we actually won. We so, won every time we played. All yeah. two times. Yeah. I don't know. I, I know when I played the first scenario. Now, I don't know if it was just the first few times I played it. It took me a few times to play that, to win that. So I didn't want to start with the first snare for you guys, because okay. whenever I threw a game out there, everyone's like, ah, this game's too hard. I don't want to play this. <laughs> Who does? So I try and give an... Er well, I didn't know the, the difficulty right, of right. it. Um, I did right. have fun, though. That's all that matters. <clears throat> I had fun building my character up. I did not... In the, in the game, just real quick, in the rules, if there's no one in... There's no monsters in your room, yeah. you can draw a card that gives you, like, a, an item. Yes. I didn't want to do anything but draw those cards. I was I like, oh, come help me kill him. He's like, nope, ah, I just want to grab these cards. I'm going to stay here because I, my character needs to stay here. You know, I want this card. I got a Labrador Retriever now. You know, like, <laughs> that, yeah. that was cool. That was fun. Yeah. It was a very fun game. I would definitely play it again. But I felt it might have been a little on the easy side. Okay. Let's see. There's eight other scenarios and four other main bosses. The try. minis looked very good. Yeah, they're very the good. card quality was great. Like everything in the cool game is really very good. good. Yeah, I like it, it, every scenario feels a little different. They were cool minis. Yeah. So, all right. So that's and, what we did. That's well, what we there's did one that. more board yeah. game. Okay, keep going. Keep going. No, go ahead. Whispers. Oh, okay. Yeah. So, well, that's that's really the games that I brought to play with, and right. we haven't really talked about those before, so we brought that up. Uh, let's bring go back to packs. There was one other game that we did get to demo on the floor, and it was uh, War of Whispers. War of Whispers. It's the game that I saw on Kickstarter. Um, I don't think it's fully out yet. They did have it on sale at the show. Yes. Uh, we sat down. Um, I'm gonna. I'm gonna. Ha can you, are you fluent enough to explain what the game's like? Um, I want to say it's like remember not Spartacus, but Spartacus times. It's whispers. You know, you're trying to Game of Thrones. We're all Littlefinger. Yeah. We aren't. Don't really own a, a, a country or an army. There's five different armies out there, five sure. different armies up to four players, and we are trying to, um, we plan different actions between those armies to, um, at the end of the game, or I think it was three rounds. We only played three rounds. Um, so I think it's, yeah, you're right. It's right. four rounds. Uh, <clears throat> you, um, you're trying to, oh, sorry, let's say it back. There's five, there's five different armies. At the beginning of the game, you shuffle each one of those army tokens up, and you secretly, you, you put them face down. On each character's board. Each character's board, thank you. As and you own. look, so like, okay, the green army is worth five victory points if they're in first place at the end of the game. Or for every castle they own at the end of the game, it's worth five points for you. And then red's worth three points for you in second place. So you, And then the last one's like worth negative points. But I don't know what your combination is. They could be the same. They could be the same. It could be different. Right. Right. So we're trying to, like, manipulate these armies, uh, but we could be working together. I could see that you're building up the green army to become really strong, but that's who I also need, too. So I'll allow you to waste your actions to make green really strong while I build up red and get them in a position. The attacking, it's, it's very simple. You're not rolling dice. It's just like, okay, I've got two guys here, one guy here. He's died. I'm, I'm left with one. Right. But the different actions, like either mustering, getting more forces, moving them on the board, attacking, um, getting certain cards, which apparently became really powerful, how you could manipulate and move things around the board, uh, was different. Um, I really liked it. Okay. Okay. I really liked the game because I thought it was different. It is definitely different. And that's really, I'm at the stage now in, in the gaming collection, I'm looking for games that are 
different. Okay. You know, I don't need another risk, another variation on risk. You know, I think risk legacy is the best one. Um, so I don't really need that again. I don't have the shelf space for it, but this sounded different. It was pricey. It's very expensive. So, uh, and there's like no models in it either. Right. Very small, little models. That's, that's the thing. Yeah. Models. One thing. Yeah. It was very little. So I don't, I don't, I didn't actually understand the price point. Um, okay. but after playing it, I don't think you really cared much for it. I thought it was okay. Okay. Um, I did, like you're saying, I did enjoy the mechanics of the game, how I don't know what you are. Mm -hmm. It's a, it's a deceit, a deceitful game. I'm yes. trying to, I'm trying to figure out what you're doing. Yes. I like that. Okay. That's really cool. And I like the fact that I don't know what my, what your things are. I know what mine are. I can switch mine, but then they become mm -hmm. visible. Yes. So now I know what things are. I know I can see what you're trying to do. I like that. However, it just, just something about it. I okay. just couldn't get in because the battles, I just felt like in four turns, I think it is only four turns, you four couldn't rounds. do much. It was like that big circle. Yeah, it was like green out. guy goes, and then, the, you know, every time the green guy went or whatever, it, it, that was turn yeah. kind of thing. I think it's kind of hard to demo. We only did one round we as well, round, you know, so, so I got a card I couldn't even use. It, right, so, right. Yeah. You got a taste of it. It was cool. I would definitely check it out. If I At a lower there, price point. Definitely. Sure. I would have picked, I would have picked it up. Okay. And I could have gotten behind that. Yeah. It was it was cool. Yeah. Uh, I think that's it for the board games really there. They, yeah, they didn't really it. have much. They did have a section at the back. We weren't together where they, they had like um, new games that were coming to Kickstarter, like okay. first look section. Okay. There was one out there, which is actually a Kickstarter out right now. I mean, I wish I remember the name of it, but it's like espionage and it's like a hidden movement type game, okay. which I do like those. Um, and it's like, you know, mind agents versus something else. And it seems pretty cool. And there's different scenarios. You unlock different cards. So by me seeing at the show, it triggered me to check out the Kickstarter that's coming out. Um, uh, but that was really it. There wasn't any other major board games. All the same booths were there. They, they usually are. I went there to, to, you know, I always go to like, I, I, we got this set up here with this sales well, of me, glory. Okay, no, keep going. Sorry. Which, um, I just got into this game is super old, I think. Uh, I wanted to go like pick up some some ships or a mat or something there, and they had nothing. So <laughs> they always had the same stuff there. I, okay. I will say that there is one store that has like, a lot of old games. And Braden found the first edition of Descent, really big box that we have down here for forty bucks. He picked that up instantly. He opened it up, and everything seemed to be it in there in great pretty condition, good more condi better condition than my box that I've had sitting here. So. We did play Cowboy Bebop, but that's in another video. So yes. if you're looking, if you're interested in Cowboy Bebop, check out that video. Uh, that's a full, uh, we did a review and we played a full three rounds. That's 35 minute long video. Yeah. So check that out. That's it for board games. That's it for board games. Uh, so the other games we saw there, I do want to mention um, Switch and Bake, or Bake and Switch. It's a four player overcooked kind of game. Oh, right, right, right. Um, you're, you're cooks, and you have doughies you're trying to throw into the oven. You can combine them to make higher points. Um, there's moldies who are trying to eat the doughies. Okay. The good guys and bad guys, trying to keep the bad guys away from them by punching them. You pick up the good guys. You can combine them, get them bigger, throw them in the oven. They get too big. You can't walk too far. Okay. It's like basketball. You pick up anything. You can walk three steps, and you got to pass it to your friend or okay. throw it in the oven. Um, there's different kinds of good guys, doughies. So the, the oven wants different kinds. So you can't just keep getting the same ones. Okay. Throw them in there. What makes this game different though, is there, we didn't see it in the demo and I so wanted to see it. There's boss fights. Hmm. How do you put a boss fight in this overcooked, you know, this bacon sweat? How do you do that in here? Yeah. 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 I don't know, but it sounded really good. The girl who was explaining the game to me, I, it was like, oh, I would really like to check this out because it's four players. Okay. We, there was a bunch of us there. We could play it. It's, it's a game we could play all together. She sold me this game. It was like, this sounds really good. I can't wait to play this. It was a lot of fun. The maps are different. Like there was ones with waterfalls that move enemies and move the good guys. Uh, there's ones where there's pits. So you can't walk over the pit with the dough. You had to throw it to your friend to then put in the oven. Different levels. So I had to throw it on the, to a, onto a, um, an elevator so it could go up to you to put it in the oven. Very cool. The enemies got a little harder, okay. faster. I liked it. I would like to play this on four players. I think it's a great party game. I think it's a really cool like game. We're at home. We're like, hey, you got like an hour. Let's bang out a couple levels. 
They said there's going to be a bunch of levels. Mm. The bosses weren't really interesting to me. This, you know, it's this whole world, which is pretty cool. Okay. More overcooked. More overcooked. With bosses, though. But with bosses. Okay. Yeah, and it looked really cool, and the woman who was explaining it to me was very nice. That's a plus. It was, yeah, as it, a, it is po- a plus. As opposed to a game that I don't have on our list, but I want to bring it up. I don't remember the name of it. But it, <laughs> it was the... Uh, the Sea of Thieves, basically, Battle oh, Royale. Okay. Yeah, I forget the name of it. Pirate Cove, Blackbeard's no, stop. ship. It was in the, if you did go to PAX, it was in the front of it, all the way to the left, kind of where, like, the schools are. Yeah. The, I yes. forget the name of the game, I'm sorry. It's somewhere, but it basically looks like Sea of Thieves and Battle Royale. We went over, we took a look at it, and... I think as soon as you start, you have like three or four minutes to like set up your ship and get tools and do all these things. And we walked away after two minutes. Okay. Because the person there that was demoing it, or like the guy, was not, didn't wasn't really tell us it. He wasn't into it. He didn't okay. answer the questions. Nothing was going on. And we just left. It looked like Sea of Thieves. Okay. Fair enough. Yeah. Um, we did another video on Maneater, which is the shark mm-hmm. game. Check out that video if you're interested in that. Another indie game, Bite the Bullet. We have another video on that, which was pretty cool. Um, another indie game, which was kind of interesting. It reminded me of like Kung Fu. It's called Kung Fu Kickball, but it was like Kung Fu Dodgeball, I thought was the other one, where there was a, a pipe and you could grab the pipe and pole vault over. I watched you guys play this. Yeah, it was okay. It's one of those like, you know, we're together. Let's play this for five minutes. Not really a huge game. Sports Friends is all you need. Sports Friends is a Sports Friends much is bigger game. Great yeah. game. We still have never played that. Um, another game, uh, it's going to be another video our friend Nick did, is Circanium City. Mm-hmm. It's kind of like, um, oh, I can't think of what it's like. Um, a, 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 sim, a life simulator. You're going out, you're getting a job, you're walking the town. Just um, what I need. Yeah. I, I, it's I called Animal familiar. Crossing. Nick was really into it. Okay. Um, so that video, you can check that out. He is very into it, so hopefully he'll have some good insight in that. Another game that he was really into is these builder games. Yeah. Uh, this sand, cool. sand Ship. Uh, oh, it's for Android. Okay. It's for Android, uh, your tablets, iOS. He's like an building. engineer. He likes to build a bunch of stuff with circuit boards. And yeah. Boards. Yeah. You know, you have, you have a, a, a forge. You have to take the iron from the forge and move it to the conveyor belt to move it to the steamer. You know. I, he's interested in that. He checked that out. He is going to be purchasing it. He said, I think he's a new spokesperson for that game. He should be. He should be. The people at the booth were very nice as yeah. well. Um, they provided some footage of us, footage of it, so we could provide it during this video. He really liked it. He's a big fan of those games. He does. He, likes he said, um, if we weren't there, he would have stayed at that booth the entirety of PAX and played this game. Um, awesome. So if you're That's into really those builder games, yeah. I would definitely check out Sand Ship. He's really into it. I can't. I don't want to comment on it. I don't want to say anything good or bad because I'm not into the games. So I, I really don't have a, an, an opinion on it. Yeah. Yeah. Um, what else did we play back there? Um, uh, towards the back, they had really cool open VR. This is the first time I saw PAX having multiplayer VR. So you mm. can play a two-person game in VR just like in free play in the back. That's yeah. really cool. Um, I guess that's it. Uh, well, okay, well, let's that go. Really let's it. stay inside the convention center. The, okay. They got rid of chicken fingers and fries. They did. That's the, food, the best thing. The food there is no longer good. But they the do trucks. have the food trucks outside. And I did trucks. go to those. You weren't there with nope. me. Delicious melt okay. outside. It was. It was good. It was freezing though. Yeah, it was, it was cold. cold. It was cold the whole weekend. It was cold. Uh, we did go to one party. We had two parties. Two parties. Okay. <clears throat> we went to more, but we didn't get in because Kevin takes forever to get ready. <laughs> uh, let's real. T- let's quickly touch about the Red Bull party. Red Bull Arcade. Yes. Really cool concept. You get you get uh, get these coins that basically it's like a boardwalk arcade where you can go and you can check uh, cash your coins in to get prizes. Anything from a slinky to a shirt. Spider rings, slinkies, finger. I think there was finger cuffs. That's finger. great. A, a, a hat, shirts. Yeah, pretty cool stuff. You get five tokens, and the tokens are not... It's free play. It was Everything's cool. A lot free. of old arcade games were there. There weren't that many, but there were enough. 
there weren't there were, a lot of there people. There, there, there weren't a lot of people there. Where the group of people were were around the one air hockey table. So you got like forty people around the one air hockey. Like I, I would like to have seen maybe like eight air hockey tables, and then the group of us, or even a, a grander tournament of air hockey to get these coins and do all these things. That's what I, I would have liked. I think the concept was there. It's just. Hey, there's some old arcade games. The execution wasn't. Yes. 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 And then you could get like twenty dollars drinks. Tw- yeah, yeah, it was it was, yeah, I think it really it was like fourteen dollars for alcohol, sixteen dollars for virgin drinks. That's, That's a lot okay. of money. It's okay. Please Isn't don't. this sponsored by Red? Um, but yeah, I think I think it was a great opportunity for you to do that, but there was no execution of the the coins. There was no one walking yeah. around maybe challenging you. Yes. There's none of that, you know? Yeah. We didn't even do it ourselves, though. So right. we, that was a missed opportunity on our end to say, hey, you know we what? We should have walked away with a, a nice shirt or one, of us. one of us. Yeah. We could have played SNK or something like something. that you're doing. So. Yeah, that was a failed opportunity on our side. But the real one real big party we went to was something I... <laughs> I'm going to take over for just a second. Do I this. lobbied for this, and that was a literal... I literally we lobbied We had a vote this. for this. He lost the vote, and we still went. Monster Hunter Iceborne. It was the best party. It was the best, best <clears throat> party even at, you know from last year to this year. Oh, by far. By far. Food. Free. So much of it. Chicken. Steak. Pizza. pizza salad. salad. It was, there was a carving station. Hors d'oeuvres. Nitrous. Rice Krispie treats. You know. Not, you know, liquid, liquid, liquid nitrogen. 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 <laughs> That's how crazy it was. Liquid nitrogen. Uh, yeah, Rice Krispie Treats. That yeah, was so pretty sweet. Pretty fire, yeah. Uh, not fire. Ice. Now, now we're even. Now yeah. we're even. Uh, open bar. Open bar. Pretty cool. Uh, and there we got there, and there was basically like a tournament. We had to wait in line. You know, uh, well, it was cool. We had to wait in line. <clears throat> You had to pre-register for the party. If you pre-registered, you could have been able to buy into the tournament. Is what my understanding was. Got it. Got it. Um, you did. You had to wait on the cold for two hours. What? Well, one hour, but you had to be there early to get in because it didn't open till nine. But you got in. It was worth it. It was cool. The, the setup inside. We've been to this location many times. Every year, almost. Yeah. Uh, and they did a really great job inside. A lot of TVs. We got to see the competition. The tail end of the competition. We right. got to see. It was really excited. People got into it. There was people in costume. It was really cool. It. it, it it makes me want to go back and play Monster Hunter again, which is, I think, great. I think the new expansion looks really good, so I'm glad. I'm glad we went. They had the photo shoots. They had the temporary tattoos that you could get sprayed on. They had the you know the tents, the mm-hmm. the cooking stations. They they had it really themed to yeah. Monster Hunter. Yeah. You know the carving station, like you're cooking the food. Yeah, very cool. Mm-hmm. The swag you got was a was a bag. My we Monster actually Hunter got pants. swag. This was like the only swag we really got. Yes. Uh, inside that bag was a nice like. Actually, it was a pretty nice bag, a drawstring bag, a pair of Monster Hunter um, socks, kooky socks or poogie poogie socks. Excuse me. I'm thinking of the bird. But okay, it's, yeah. it's the, the poogie socks or piggy socks, whatever. Um, a nice enamel pin. Yeah. Uh, a Monster Hunter Iceborne themed for PS4. Yeah. And if you were lucky, oh. you had a gold coin in your bag. Uh, the gold coin allowed you to turn that in for a autographed Monster Hunter Iceborne Japanese theatrical trailer poster wow. signed by people. He got one. Yeah, Braden and I both got one. That's great. That's the same people that I've seen at San Diego Comic Con, so it was pretty cool, but we didn't get to meet them. It was already signed, like, sitting there waiting for you. Yeah. Here you go. Yeah, yeah. Um, but the party was nice. It was good. It was really good. It was the only party, though, I do have to mention this, the only party that we saw them breaking down while we were staying. <laughs> yeah, they're like, oh, that's it. Gotta, gotta get the club going after this. Get, get, yeah. these, get these gamers out of here. Let's bring the nightclub in. <clears throat> yeah. So, um, I'm gonna transition. This is the final thing that I have to say about PAX East 2020, uh, which is the, the worst part of it. Okay. They moved the GoldenEye tournament <laughs> to Sunday afternoon. We leave on Sundays. I didn't have a chance to defend my title of GoldenEye champion from last year. I think the person who was uh, in second place knew the, um, the organizers. I'm last sure he year. did. So they might have changed that because if you check our GPS status every year, we are on the road on Sundays for the he past six years. He knew that. So he can check your your badge. That's what he did. And see where you are. He did not when want to challenge leave. me. 
he was very upset. So next year, hopefully, they... It's always Saturday night, users. and all of a sudden it happened to be Sunday afternoon. Uh, do you know it's always Saturday night? Because we I just kind of it once. Thursday or Friday. Yeah. Thursday or Friday. Okay. Um, I had a good PAX. I thought this would be my... I thought this was going to be my last PAX last year. Mm -hmm. This PAX was really good. Uh, I felt that not having the big boots helped limit the amount of people on the show floor, or at least spread them out. I liked it. I don't like the crowds. Saturday at 10.05, I was ready to go back to the hotel room, I want to say. So, yeah, I, I don't know. I like PAX. I love PAX. I love the people. I love what they do. It's becoming too big, I feel. I can't wait for PAX Unplugged. That's where it's at. Yeah. You should go for, you know, like, that's where it's really at. Right. Board games and stuff, but it just, it's just it's slower. There's less people. It's local to us. It's, it's just, a, I think it's just a nicer show. Yeah. So, that is our coverage of PAX East 2020. As Chris has mentioned, we have multiple other videos highlighting specific games or board games that we actually demoed throughout our four-day event. Uh, I think the best takeaway from it is just being able to go out with a group of guys and, and friends and actually be able to enjoy all of the hobbies that we like. We, right. some, of, some of these guys we don't see, you guys see them like once or twice a year. It gives us the chance now that, now that we're getting older we both have, fam we have families now. It gives us a reason to kind of get together and just hang out and do what we, you know, enjoyed for the past the decade, two decades growing up together. So uh, I definitely do like going to PAX. Um, let us know what you think. Um, do you go to events like this? Um, do you ever want to hang out with us and go to an event like this? Let us know. Thanks a lot for watching, and we will see you guys next time.